I'm just on my way into the studio here and a number of you have been sending me files to work on and if you're working in Logic or GarageBand I want to help you out. Actually I want to help me out by helping you out. So you know how I love my 5 and 5? Well today I've got 5 steps to recording more professional vocals. So basically today we're doing a beginner's guide to setting up Logic to do vocals. If you think stuff like that sounds kind of cool, maybe hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss anything. So first thing, setting up Logic. Go right into Preferences, Audio, there's a billion things to deal with but we're just focused on recording right now. The First thing is devices, so you should have already installed the software for your device and you can select it in this drop down menu. You can see here HD Native, that's a Pro Tools thing, that's what I'm using. Of course you'll have to look for something else. Okay, buffer size. So this has to do with what's called latency and that is when the signal goes in, how long it takes to go into the computer and come back out. And you can think of it kind of like a giant revolving door but with only two partitions. The longer it is, one side fills up and then it spins into the computer and then the other side fills up that it spins into the computer and then it's got to come back out. You sing into the microphone, it goes into the computer and then it does a round trip and comes back out and that's when you hear it. Now some software has a different layer to it so you can listen directly but if your computer's fast enough it's actually kind of nice to do it this way. So the smaller the number, the faster it will go in and out of your computer. You're going to have to maybe do a balancing act depending on your computer because some computers computers will stall or crash if 64 is usually really good I find 128 manageable anything over that you start to hear as an echo or a phasey problem not much fun you hit apply changes you want to jump into general here I feel like wave is the preferred format 24-bit recording it's not super important what that is if you uncheck it you get 16 24 is better software monitoring is good if your computer is fast enough the rest of this stuff let's file that under we'll deal with that later when you first start a session you get this dialog so if you want to record something you're going to have to do audio you select the input channel I've got a bigger rig so I've got a ton of channels but you're probably going to end up having maybe one or two depending on what interface you're using this is what you need to be careful about so see this little circle here if you click that that turns it into a stereo track so if you've got a stereo track that you're going to record to you can use that mics tend to be mono so that's how you convert a track from a mono track to a stereo and vice versa. Step two is cable up your microphone. So just while we're talking about cabling, I'll put a little bubble thingy up here. I did do a segment on all the cables that you find in the studio. What we need to talk about here is the input. So it goes onto the back of this and you have to choose an input called mic or line. So a microphone needs to go into a mic input and this here selects the line input or the mic so on this particular one you push it in for line we're not going into line we're going into mic this switch here 48 volts you need that if your microphone has phantom power this one does not have phantom power this preamp same kind of thing we go into the mic input and this one you select the mic this is the line side and this is the mic side I also did a segment about cabling up an entire studio. I'll put a bubble up here again so that you can get an overview of some thoughts and best practices for cabling up an entire studio if you got more than a couple pieces of gear. So let's move quickly into step three. Let's get Logic up on the screen here. We'll talk about setting the level for this microphone going into Logic. So I would turn this knob up until I'm getting check, 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 one, two, check, one, two, check, until I'm getting to about there. So step four, channel settings in Logic. And you can see I'm on a mono track. If I'm on a stereo track, you see it only goes on one side. Mono track right down the middle. And so that's how you set up Logic. You need to make more of the same. You just click this right there. You make more and more and more. It should only input one at a time, but that's how you can make more channels to record yourself with. So step five, is setting up Logic to sing over top of a two track. So now say somebody sends you a track and you want to sing to it. So if you've got Logic open, here's like a track I'll just use as an example. If I just throw it up here on this empty space, it'll go in. Now let me show you something that's pretty cool. There's a plugin in Logic. Go down here to metering, BPM counter, run the track.
See, it says 130.1. It's never like exact. Go up here, change the tempo to 130. Works perfectly. You can take this channel here, label it vocal, and start recording. Hey, how you doing? You can see that's it. So you record your vocals like that. You're done. You could send that to me to mix it into your track, send me the whole session, whatever. I could open this up, take all the bits I need out, and away you go. Okay, that's it. That's your beginner's guide to setting up Logic to record vocals. If you thought any of that was kind of cool, again, please do hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, and most importantly, if you have any questions, put them in the comments section so that I can answer them for you. If you know something and you want to share it, this is the place. Okay, talk to you guys later.